What is up, CompSci students? Today, we're going to learn about stacks, specifically an array implementation of stacks using generics in Java. So a little bit of conceptual understanding here. We have a whole video on that. I recommend you check that out. You might recognize me. But a stack is a data structure. And in this video, we're going to implement it using arrays, which means that we're going to make it so that each of these blocks that can store any data type corresponds to one of the indices in the array. Cool, so let's head over to our coding environment. This, in this case, would be the top. And then we have other values in here. Cool. So I'm going to create a new class called, you guessed it, stack. <laughs> if I can write it properly. Cool. So we're first going to initialize the variables we want to keep track of. So the most important variable in a stack is the top, because that is where all the action is going to happen. We are adding to the top, and we are taking from the top. The top is going to have the value we are going to have access to. So uh, another important valuable variable is the maximum size we want the stack to be. We're going to call that max size. And then, of course, we're going to create the stack itself as an array. Note that I'm going to use object because we want to put any data type into um, the array or stack. And for that, we're going to use generic. So up here, by convention, we use capital T for type or data type. Um, cool. So let's give us some space. And we're going to initialize the stack now. So every time you were going to code a stack, you're going to want to tell um, the code how big you want the stack to be. So you're going to give it a size. Um, oh, we're, uh, yeah. Um, we're going to set the top equal to negative one. And I'm going to explain why in a moment. Uh, max size is going to equal the input size. And then our stack is going to equal a new object with our max size in there. Cool. So here, the top is going to be the index of the topmost element of the stack. And the reason we're going to set it to negative 1 is because every time we're going to push a new value, so over here, when the stack, when the stack is fully empty, so there's no value in it, when we want to push a value, we're going to want to increase the top so that it accurately points to the actual top of the stack. So when the array is empty, it's just empty. When we push a new value, say we want to push 10, we want to point the top to this value. So if top is going to be 0, actually point it. Cool. If top is going to be zero, it must have been negative one beforehand so that we can keep working up and keep working our way up. Cool. That is okay. All right. Oh, well. uh, now we're going to go to do exactly what I just talked about, which is create the push method. So push means to add an element onto the stack. So in this case, we pushed the value 10. So uh, as we keep pushing values to the stack, say here we add uh, 2.8, top would point here. Then we add, say we add a string, hello, top would point there. So. Let's turn this into code. We do public uh, Boolean. And the reason I'm going to have a, uh, the method return a Boolean is because otherwise you could just return void. But we can give the method a functionality in the sense that we can use it to be able to tell us was the value, be, was the value pushed or not. 
could we push or not? Um, the reason why you might not be able to push a new value is because the stack might be full. So you can't push anything back. So we're going to give it a value of any data type. Cool. And this is going to insert element value into the top of the stack. So first we wanna check, as I said, if the stack is full. So if top is equal to max size minus one, remember top goes with the index number, not the max size. In this case, max size equals four. So remember that um, if top equals max size minus one, which is uh, in this case, it would be three when, if the stack is full, uh, you could also do top plus one equals max size, doesn't really matter. Um, what we want to do there is return false, but first print a message saying stack overflow. That's the terminology used for when a stack is full. You might also recognize it because it's a very useful website you probably have already checked out. Uh, stack overflow is a great website for uh, computer science help. So uh, this is done. Whoops in case stack is full. And then we want to return false because it was not able to push a new value. Uh, in the case that you can push a value, which is going to be most of the time, you want to increase top as we did in the example. Um, we want to store the new value into that top. And then return true because it was able to push the new value into the stack. So cool, there we go, that's redundant. All righty. So that is the push method. Now we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna write the pop method. Now the pop method is really interesting because what happens, a, uh, a stack is to store data, but we're gonna eventually want to retrieve it. So let me, yeah. So what happens when you wanna retrieve, say, the top element, we're gonna to want to, let's get another color. What's gonna happen when we pop the top value is we get it out of the way and then we erase it from the stack. And then we also change the top so that it reflects where it is actually in the stack. The top now changes to top minus one, right? Because the new top is now index one or 2.8 because hello was removed from the stack. So let's turn this into code. Public, uh, and we're gonna return the value we just popped. So uh, re uh, return any data type T, pop, no argument. And this is going to return and remove topmost element of the stack. However, what happens if the stack is empty? You can't pop anything. So we're gonna first wanna check for that case where there is no stack, I mean, no element in the stack um, to be able to tell the user, hey, you can't pop anything. So in that case, if top is less than, zero because um, when we get to top is equal to zero and then we pop 10, top will do that minus one and it will go back to how it was before, top equals negative one. So if top is less than zero, or I guess you could say top equals negative one, um, we wanna tell the user stack underflow which is again, the terminology for when a stack is empty. So you can't pop anything. And then uh, we'll return null. In the case there is a value, which will be most of the cases, uh, we're gonna store that value in this variable value. And we're gonna do stack top. Ooh, and notice how it's underlined in red. This is because, well, 
Let's see, because mm, it's saying you want any data type, but you're giving me an object. So what does any good computer scientist do? Just cast it. <laughs> so we just tell it, brute force it into this data type that I want it to be. Cool. So now we've saved value from being just ricocheted out of the stack. Um, what do we want to do next? Delete it. So stack top is equal to null now. So we've just deleted the value, but we've stored it in a variable to be able to return it later on. Uh, we want to reduce top by one and then return the value. Cool. So that is the pop method. Now we basically coded an entire stack um, using arrays. Uh, these are the fundamental methods for a stack. However, there's also other functions that are very useful, such as the peak method, which is used to just reveal or just see what is the topmost element in the stack. So if we used the top, uh, the peak method currently in this example that we have now, we, we already um, retrieved hello and we used it for whatever we want to do. The top is now 2.8. And if we use the peak method, all it would do is it would return 2.8. It wouldn't delete it, it wouldn't do anything else. We just return the top value um, just to see. So that will very, be very similar to the pop method in, in the sense that we have to check if the stack is empty. So I'm gonna copy paste and copy paste is a great function, but also very dangerous. So be wary, especially in code, because if you have a mistake, you copy paste it everywhere. So we'll make sure, um, this is pretty safe because it's a universal condition, right? If the stack is empty, top is always gonna be negative one or less than zero. Cool. Um, so again, this is just going to reveal the topmost element of a stack. It's not going to delete it. Um, what we want them to do is, ooh, should we run the risk of copy pasting again? Let's run the risk. But remember, we do not want to delete the value. We do not want to reduce top. There you go. So that's it. Um, we could also, yeah, no, we won't print. Um, you could Souted or uh, system dot out dot um, what is it system dot out dot print line uh, value, but it's better if methods don't print out stuff. You can print out the content of a method itself in the main method in the main class. Um, cool. So that is um, let's just be explicit here. It does not remove value from top. Oops. Okay. Uh, another useful function or method to write is the size of the stack. So if we would just want to know how many elements there are, we could do public int size. We only want size back. Um, and we're just going to return top, uh, top plus one because top is always going to point at uh, the index of the topmost element, add one so that it's humanly understandable. And then that's your size method. I would say the next most important method is a, the two string method for stack because eventually you're gonna wanna print it out to view it at some point if you want. Uh, I recommend doing it because it's pretty cool and useful when coding. So we're gonna do a public string because we are returning a string, two string, and then um, we're gonna create a string S which is going to be, um, what we want to do is we want to iterate over the whole stack. So starting over here, we begin here, then move down. So if we had elements up here, so uh, nine, eight, we start at nine, go down to eight, go down to point eight, and then down to 10. So, um, that is just using, let's initialize. You know what? I'm going to initialize the string S 
because we have to initialize and then concatenate it. I'm going to initialize it with the peak method so that we already have a starter function or yeah, a place to start and we don't have to add it then in the for loop. So I'm going to do string dot value of um, this dot peak. And we already have a first, the first, the topmost value. In our for loop then, we're going to start at top minus one. Int i equals top minus one. And this, again, I mean, what I did here is just to save time. And um, yeah, so we don't have to do things. Uh, we can be more efficient. Um, so then I we want it to be greater than negative one for when top goes down to zero. And then i minus minus, because we're going from top to bottom. Cool. So what we're gonna do then is S concatenate. Let's put some commas in here. Um, concatenate the next values of the stack. So basically what we're doing here is we're starting off at nine. Starting off at nine where uh, top should be pointing at Uh, this is this line, line 48. Then in the for loop, we take top minus one, which is two. And we add it to um, string s that we'd already created. So we add eight to that. And then we go down one. We add 2.8 to that. Then we go down another and we add 10. And what do we return? You guessed it. Yes. Cool. So that is basically a fully implemented stack. I don't know if you'd want any other methods. You could create any other methods you create, but or you want. Um, but these are the basic, the main ones. So let's head over to our main method and test it out because testing is such an important part of of coding in general. So we're going to create our stack S as new stack. And let's make it size four as we have in this example here. So let's first check if the stack is empty. In other words, do we get a stack underflow uh, message? So we're gonna try and pop a value that's not gonna be there because we just created a stack. Uh, let's test that. Yeah, we get stack underflow, excellent. So now we're gonna push some values. So. Let's push 10 and then let's push a really wacky. Yeah, let's do that. See how it how it treats it. Um, let's check the size now. S dot size. Oops. Actually, first before that, I'm gonna actually push the values. Um, and push does not return anything visible. Uh, if we sout it though, if we print it, you see? Yeah, so if we do that, we should get a true statement, remember? Because we made the function return a Boolean. Yes, true, we get true, excellent. Let me get rid of that so that we don't get, our space doesn't get cluttered. Um, let's keep, let's do size. Test it should be two. Oh, we did. <laughs> we have to print it out. S dot size. Excellent. We got two because one and two. Great. Qu quick mass. <laughs> um, let's keep pushing stuff. Let's. Uh, how about we push a string? Uh, hello, and then. Oh, not, not a, not a, not. huh? Can we push? Can we push emojis? <laughs> Are they accept that? Is it now? What's wrong? What if we put it into this string? 
Okay, well, <laughs> this is live testing. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. We can see about that. Let's see. Let's see if that works. Maybe, maybe it'll give me an error. Nope, it went through. <laughs> I guess we can print. We can. We can store emojis. I mean, it is any data type. Although this would be a string. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's um. Let's 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 print it. I want to actually see what it looks like. Is he going to show this crying of laughter thing? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. Live testing here. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be able to push emojis. But then again, anything is possible in the coding world. That's hilarious. OK, cool. And you can see our two string method is working beautifully. We first push um, 10 then that, then hello, then the crying of laughter face. And this is at the bottom, this is at the top. So uh, let's now uh, test the peak function and we should get the emoji back. So south s dot peak. <laughs> yes, we got the crying of laughter face. Excellent. So. Um, if we try to push something else, we should get a stack underflow s dot push stack overflow. Sorry, this will not pass because remember our max size was set to four, and currently we have four elements. Let's also test out the size s dot size. If we get four, this line thirteen. <laughs> bad luck for some should not be able to happen. And we will get a stack overflow message. Great, yep, worked. Awesome. Uh, let's start popping. <laughs> let's start popping. Okay, so s.pop and we're going to, that's going to remove the crying of laughter face. I'm not going to print out its value. I'm going to print out the next value. So sout s.pop and this one should give me the second to last element currently uh, which should be hello we should get this line back because this is just popping it it is returning a value but i'm just not printing it as i'm doing in this line so let's see what happens excellent cool uh let's check for the size now to see if size is actually decreasing uh it should because the top is moving uh, and that's changing the size. Uh, let's do a peak and then let's do a print. Awesome, so then um, st this was stack overflow, this was pop, this was the next pop which returned hello. Size is, oh, we gotta print it out forget the size, you know, before I said we shouldn't do a print. Um, SS size should return two. Excellent. Then we did an S dot peak, which again, we did not print. Aye, aye, aye. And then printing the stack there does actually work. Awesome. Great, so we just coded a stack. I think we tested all of the methods in here. Take a final look. Um, it's definitely very useful. It's also on the website. Um, I'm sure if you scroll up or down, you'll find it close to this video. Um, yep, we tested. we tested all of the methods. Great, so now you know how to implement a stack using arrays and generics in Java. I hope you learned something. Uh, and as always, keep coding. You deserve a chocolate for learning. Good job. See you next time.